Side chaining processes is a valuable mixing technique wherein the signal from one channel is used to control an effect on another channel. When side chaining with logic, the plugins involved and how they are routed can take many forms, depending on the desired result. In this exercise, you will explore a side chain technique employed by mix engineers to add low end to a kick drum by using a gated sine wave oscillator triggered by the kick drum signal itself. Using the same project we used for the managing the mix lecture, go to the kick stem, open the kick stem, and you can see there's a live kick, a sample kick, and a sub kick. We'll be using the live kick as a trigger. Next, we go to track, new audio track. What happens is a new audio track is created after the track stack. We're going to name that kick oscillator. And next, we're going to go to the audio effects menu and we're going to choose a test oscillator which sits in the utility folder. I'll just bypass that for a minute. So the test oscillator generates a raw waveform at a set frequency. So we're going to use this to generate a sine wave that will then supply the low end for the kick that we're trying or the sub kick that we're trying to create. So by default, when you open the test oscillator on an audio track, it will start producing a constant signal. In order to stop that signal, I've just bypassed the plugin. So next, in the kick oscillator track, channel strip, click the second insert. And here we're going to go to dynamic and we're going to go to noise gate and we're going to select a mono noise gate. So now we have a test oscillator and a noise gate after it. The noise gate allows the signal to pass through only when it is above a set threshold, thereby opening the gate. When the signal is below the threshold, it reduces the gain by a specified amount, thereby closing the gate. Because it is placed after the test oscillator in the signal chain, the noise gate plugin receives the generated sine wave signal in series. By using a side chain for input, you can have the noise gate listen to another channel signal level to open and close the gate instead of the test oscillators, which allows the sine wave to pass through only when the si side chain signal is above the set threshold. Using this technique, you can use the original kick drum, the kick live track that we've, uh, we have open, to open and close the gate in time to the kick drum. So in the sidechain menu, on the uh, noise gate, we're going to locate Kick Live Audio 7. Note that the list displayed in the sidechain's pop-up menu corresponds to the channel type and number, not to the channel order in the mixer. Channel type and channel number are displayed in the mixer at the top of each channel strip. Next, I'm going to close the attack hold and release on the gate. This is how I always start my gating by closing those off. So I'm just dealing with the threshold. Now I'm going to solo the live kick and solo the oscillator and play and turn the oscillator on. You can hear an incessant high pitch sine wave generated by the track oscillator. I'm going to play with the threshold a little bit. You can hear now the threshold is too high, so no signal is passing through. So I'm going to start to drop the threshold. And leave it at about minus 36. going to look at the attack and the hold and the release. So if the attack is too slow, we start to lose the front end of the sine wave tone. If the hold is too open too long, it doesn't actually close in time. And if the release is too long, similar thing happens to the hold 
although the release dies away whereas the hole just stays open if I so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the attack quite fast and set the hole to around 70 milliseconds and just get rid of that clip off the end can you hear that clip on the end so I think that's pretty accurate that's how I usually set up a, a gate I usually close the attack hold and release set the threshold and then adjust these controls accordingly the sine wave now triggers in time with the original kick track whenever the signal rises above the threshold level the activity indicator lights and the gate opens allowing the test oscillator to be heard the result is a sine wave playing in time with the kick drum. The frequency of the sine wave is much too high to supply the needed low end that is the goal of the exercise. You can change the frequency of the test oscillator's generated sine wave using the frequency knob. So while playing the project, just drag the test oscillator frequency knob down. We'll go to about 50 hertz. You can monitor the sidechain signal coming into the noise gate by selecting the monitor option in the sidechain section. This is an excellent way to troubleshoot the signal flow if you are experiencing any problems. So in the noise gate window, select the monitor checkbox. We'll turn it on, should I say. And the original kick track is now sounded through the kick oscillator channel routed in via the sidechain. The noise gate sidechain section contains controls to limit the sidechain input to a specific frequency so you can key into a specific frequency range for the trigger. So for example if you have some snare spill on a kick drum you can in fact EQ it out. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to take the high cut off and we're going to take that all the way down to about 200. So that any frequencies above that will not affect the input of the side chain. Let's now listen to that in context. So I think I'm going to drag the kick oscillator into the kick sum. Turn the solos off. I'm going to solo all the drums. So this is the let's take the oscillator track. later adding a subtle low end sub to the kick drum in logic channels signal flows from the inserts to the volume fader followed by the pan control you can configure send controls to route signals at various points in the channel strip signal chain when you first open a send on a channel it routes the signal post volume and post pan which means that the signal routed to the buses will change along with both the volume fader movements and the pan control. This default behavior is the standard setup for mixing when sending signals to reverbs and delays that are inserted on auxiliary channels. However, sometimes more flexibility is required, such as the ability to send a signal pre-fade. In this exercise, you will try out both default and custom settings using post pan sends for parallel compression on a drum on drum channels as well as setting up a headphone mix using pre-fade ascends. Parallel compression is a mixing technique that applies compression to a channel signal via a bus instead of using a channel insert. This setup is often utilized to layer a heavily compressed signal with the original one, providing the sonic coloration of aggressive compression whilst maintaining the dynamic characteristics of the original channel signal. When you use this technique with a group of channels, make sure you maintain the pan relationship of the channels when you send to the auxiliary channel for processing. By sending post-pan, the panning of the individual tracks is retained and it is reflected in the stereo bus. 
In this exercise, you will apply parallel compression to the drum channels using post pan sends to maintain the stereo image. So we're going to open the mixer. And we can see on our drums, so we have sends going to bus 32, bus 18 and bus 31. So both buses 32 and buses 18 are post pan and both of them are parallel compression on drums. So if I go to sends on faders, turn that on. I've named bus 18 drum bus SSL compression. So the idea of bus 18 is that it's using a similar sort of sound to the SSL uh, bus compressor. And if I go down to bus 32, I'm using a slightly different variation of bus compressor. So I have two different types of parallel compression. And if I wanted to have a look at those, I'm just going to turn the inspector on and I can see there bus 18 is my one compressor, my SSL compressor. And now I'm going to click bus 32 and I can see my second type of bus compression. If I solo and have a listen, just the drums. just the parallel compression you can hear that the compression is quite aggressive I should try uh, bus 18 now as well but you can hear they they add it's like an, uh, an expand it's upward expansion so that they are squashing the signal quite aggressively but then blend it in with the original signals uh, just to add more power to the drums. So note that both bus compressors are stereo. And now let's just put the panning post pan to the test. So I'm going to bypass these two channels. <laughs> distortion go back to the channel and now pan it I'm gonna open up the kick drum sum and pan and you can hear that that's post pan if you have an audio interface with more than two outputs you can create an independent headphone mix for tracking sessions to provide recording artists with custom mixes for tracking you can do this by using sends on each channel to pass a signal to an auxiliary channel set to an output on a different pair of audio outputs than your main mix. To make the control rooms mix independent of the headphone mix, however, you need to configure the sends pre-fade and send the signal before it reaches the volume fader in the channel strip. This setup lets you adjust the control room mix normally by adjusting the faders and adjusting the headphone mix via the send levels. So I'm going to send the drums to a separate headphone mix. So I'm going to select all the drums by shift clicking the drum tracks. If I wanted to select all, I go to edit, select all or command A. On the selected channels, I'm going to click in the send section and I'm going to find a spare bus. So bus 36, I'll go bus 64. And again, I'm going to click again and this time make it pre-fade. Notice that when I make it pre-fade, the volume control, the output control moves from one side to the other. So it's on bus 64. There's bus 64 next to it. So I'm going to call that cans for headphones. And at the moment, it's going out through a stereo output, so it's going out through the same output. But because I have a total of eight outputs on my interface, I can then route that through outputs three and four. And on the back of the interface, I could then route outputs three and four back into my live room. 
and that now will be that would be heard by the artists Logic can bounce both regions and tracks in place or in their original position on the timeline which is extremely useful for rendering or creating a version of the data with all channel strip processing applied saving CPU resources. The Logic Bounce in Place feature provides a great deal of flexibility when producing the new file enabling you to bounce the channel's audio signal with or without plugins, effects tails and volume and pan automation. So let's navigate to track 33 bar 26 and zoom in. Solo, have a listen. We haven't got a great deal of processing going on. We've just got a, a channel EQ, the tracks panned as well. So now we're going to go to File, um, Bounce, Regions in Place, and it's going to give it the name Pete Guitar Riff underscore BIP, Bounce in Place. It's going to create a new track. We have a choice here of whether we leave the source, mute it, or delete it. So I'm just going to mute it just to, so you can see what happens. I've got the option to bypass free uh, effects plugins, which I don't want to do, I want to apply them. And of course, if I had reverb, I would want to include audio tail in file, otherwise the reverb will get chopped at the end of the file. And I'm gonna include volume and pan automation as well. And I'm gonna set normalize to off and hit okay. So you'll see the original track now is muted there's my new bounce in place track without the processing on it and note that it's also taken the pan information so it's over to the left hand side so now what I could do is mute that track hit H on the keyboard hide it paste hit H again and now I have my bounced in place guitar with no processing and panning included and volume Bouncing in place also works great for rendering software instruments into audio tracks for additional editing, processing or even exporting to another software application. So we can now open our kick drum and we've got our kick sample track. So the kick sample track has a sample and a noise gate. So I'm going to go to file, bounce, region in, region in place. I'm going to do exactly the same thing and go to OK. So now there's my sample kick. I can mute and again hide the original sample as well. So brand new to Logic Pro 10.1 are console style VCA groups. These are similar in function to the pre-existing folder track stacks wherein the stack master folder controls the subtracks as one unit without changing audio routing as some in track stacks do. However, VCA faders provide distinct ergonomic functionality, allowing you to place them anywhere in the mixer without first grouping the channels in a folder. They are also ideal for use with live automation as they put the associated channels underneath your fingers for easy control. So in this exercise, you'll assign the lead vocal to a VCA group and write automation for the channels all at once. In the mixers, scroll to the lead vocal. Pete, lead vocal, starting at channel 58. And go to view, channel strip components, and make sure that the VCA function is turned on. And you'll see it appear here just above the channel strip and here then you can click and create new VCA for selected channel strips you can see I've selected all of the channel strips in the track stack 
So I'm going to choose Pete. I've already got one set up, so I'm going to choose Pete Vocal VCA. And you can see it there. You can also see that I've assigned VCAs to all channels, not just tra track stacks, but the channels as well themselves. And now if I scroll down, and in fact, probably the best way to do it would be to turn off all these, except for my VCAs. And there we have my VCAs. So drums, bass, guitar, guitar, clean guitar, acoustic guitar, vocals, backing vocals, vocal effects, and choir. So all channels have been assigned to a VCA. And if I play the track, if I mute my VCAs, it mutes all channels because all channels are being outputted into a VCA. VCAs are a great way of balancing track elements without having to go back through the mixer. Once you've got a mix together and you've got everything assigned to VCAs, you can then just balance VCAs. So I've got drums, bass, guitars, 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 acoustic guitar, vocal, vocal, vocal and choir. And I'll begin by bringing up the drums. Give myself a little bit of headroom just in case I need it later on. Then I'll bring up the bass against the drums. One of the best ways to create a, a quick bal uh, balance of a mix is just to bring up everything against the drums. way to build up a quick mix just balancing everything against the drums <laughs> VCA channels are not represented in the tracks area when offline in VCA channels are not represented in the tracks area where offline automation is performed. So to perform the offline automation of a channel control or plugin inserted on an auxiliary VCA channels are V like VA VCA channels are not represented in the tracks area where offline automation is performed. To perform offline import VCA channels are not represented in the tracks area where offline automation is performed. To perform the offline automation of a channel control or plugin inserted on VCA, you must add it to the tracks area track list. And the way to do that usually is I just select them all and if you turn on automation you will then see your VCAs appear in your track list. I tend to start I tend to have a format or a formula if you like where I have drums and then bass and then guitars and then keyboards if I had them strings if I had them then vocals and then I usually have all my buses then after the main audio tracks, in this case track stacks. So all my buses are here. And then after the buses I have my VCAs and my master output. That's usually how I work. 
So now with the automation turned on, if I wanted to say automate my vocals. Inside, I saw your face right here. Looks like you spread your. And press A to turn on automation. And now I can automate the fader. Your wings, you were out of place, my dear. Turn the automation on by hitting A on your keyboard, and you'll see your automation is engaged. And then I'm going to go to latch because I'm going to draw in some fader movements. And let's play it from here. Right, right at the station. Play it in context. see the automation being drawn in. If I wanted to draw in offline, I use read. So if I wanted to say, let's see what's here. I'd say that bit was a bit too loud. Use the marquee tool, which creates four nodes and I can turn it up or down. really quick way to draw in global automation and of course you can also draw in uh, lanes as well like you you can on normal automation tr uh, tracks <laughs> 